our practice is 100% cash-based. We opted out of Medicare. We don't take Medicaid. We have no insurance contracts. We are HIPAA non-compliant, as in an uncovered entity. I held on for as long as I could before I got my NPI number. The only reason I got it was because my patients couldn't get tests I ordered or get reimbursed without it. So I did it for my patients. Anyway, but I owe this a lot. My partner and I owe a lot of this to the AAPS. Now, I have to admit, I did not go to a meeting until this past year, but I joined, you know, 10 years ago, and all the literature from the AAPS has been extremely helpful in helping us change our practice to third-party free. All right, my history, I, I'm, a, I'm a neurootologist, which is basically, you know, the, an inner ear specialist. I do deafness and dizziness, or as my partner likes to say, we're ear mechanics. Um, I was... I spent half of my practice in academic medicine, and the other half so far I'm, I'm in private practice now. So I, I've kind of seen both sides of the, of the fence, and I still have a, a clinical associate relationship with Tulane. Um, when I left private practice and I went into, oh, excuse me, when I left academic medicine and I went into private practice with my partner, and we do strictly neurotology, nothing else, you know, he, he looked at me and, like, what, what are you doing with all these insurance plans? A lot of these, I don't know if you realize how poorly you're being paid for a lot of these surgeries you're doing. And I started looking at this. Yeah, it didn't make sense. And especially after one particular case, I remember doing, uh, I got referred this uh, glomus tumor resection. And I don't know if you know about glomus tumor resections. It's, you know, big 12-hour surgery. The patient's in the hospital. They're fraught with all potential complications. And... After all that, I got paid $500 for the case. Interestingly, that same week, I had to call a plumber out to my house, and he spent 15 minutes and got $125. So you're going to plumbing now. Yeah, it made me think about it. It really did. Anyway, so, you know, after that, we decided, well, you know, maybe I don't need some of those plans, so I got rid of some of them. Well, fast forward to October 2001, all right? My partner... And I decided to opt out of Medicare. Now, what led to that were two particular letters, okay? The first letter was a letter from Medicare, well, it was a a notice from Medicare saying they were reducing the reimbursement for ENGs, okay? Now, ENGs are the, you know, workhorse in evaluating inner ear function, okay? And, hey, that's what we do. We do inner ear, okay? So it, it got our attention. The problem was... They wanted to reduce the reimbursement lower than what it cost us to do the ENG. And that bothered you? Oh, it bothered me. You know, so they had, we had two options here. Okay, we could either just reduce what we did in order to cut our cost to be able to continue making a profit on it, or we could opt out of Medicare and charge an appropriate fee. Now, some of my colleagues, most of my colleagues chose the former. We chose the latter. So we opted out of Medicare. The second, well, the second letter that also led to that decision was a letter to my partner saying, gee, doctor, we notice you do more ENGs than the average ENT physician. You know, with the implication, you must be defrauding us. Okay. Now, they didn't look at what he didn't do like tonsillectomies or laryngoscopies or sinus surgeries or anything like that, and didn't look at the fact that all he did was take care of inner ear stuff, okay? So he got a little nervous about that, and we talked it over, and he said, you know, we we looked at our payer mix and everything, and and he said, you know, about 30% of my patients are Medicare, okay? My, My practice wasn't as high Medicare as his. And he said, but at the same time, only 10% of my revenue is Medicare. He turned to me and said, I'll be glad to take a 10% pay cut and work one-third less. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. So we got rid of Medicare at that point. Surprise, surprise, the Medicare patients still come in to see us. They just pay us cash. And they're very thankful for everything we do for them. Interestingly, my partner did not slow down by one-third. Uh, his, his schedule filled up with other things. Okay, from 2002 to 2004, we gradually shed our insurance plans. About once every six months, we'd get rid of an insurance plan. 
The only one left at 2004 was Blue Cross, okay? Now, in November 2005, that's when we got rid of Blue Cross. Okay, at that point, they represented about 60% of the patients, but only about 40% of the revenue. Okay, so it was the biggest chunk of all of our, Medicare, our, our insurance payers. Well, what happened in 2005 in southern Louisiana? Does anybody remember? Yes. Hurricane Katrina, right? Okay. This is what happened in Hurricane Katrina. Immediately after Hurricane Katrina, Governor Blanco signs this emergency insurance order. Okay, now what this insurance order did was it, it told the insurance companies that you cannot drop a patient from their insurance if they don't pay you a premium. Okay, so you can't do that. Okay, so if, if a patient came in with Blue Cross to see me, they would still have their, their Blue Cross coverage, quote unquote. But in order to get the insurance companies to do that, they rescinded all the prompt payment laws. So even though the insurance company wasn't going to get paid, but they didn't have to pay me. And when they eventually did pay, if, if they got liable for it, it would be more than six months after the fact, and at most they would be liable for 50% of their fee schedule. So I was going to get paid six months after the fact, only half of a really bad fee schedule. So we said, I don't know if this is such a good deal. Maybe this is a good time to get rid of Blue Cross. So that's when we got rid of Blue Cross. Oh, I, I listed this here. I, I, you know, we already talked about a number of different things of why you, know, you should consider uh, you know, going third-party free. And I just threw a few of them up there. And some of these we've already talked about. Medicare's pay cut of 21.5%. Uh, now that, you know, we, we're three, third party free, I haven't had a pay cut in a long time. You know, I haven't had any threatened pay cuts either. Uh, the private insurers have followed suit with Medicare. You're all aware of the Medicare audits. You know how the, that works where they come in and they look at 20-year charts and then extrapolate and say we want, you know, $100,000 back from you. Well, I came across just recently an interesting little uh, story. A, a referring doctor uh, in southern Louisiana told us he was leaving his uh, private practice and becoming an employee of the hospital. And we asked him, well, what's going on? He said, well, Blue Cross came in and audited me. And Blue Cross audited you? Yeah, yeah, they came in, they looked at a few charts and told me I owed them $200,000. I don't have $200,000. <laughs> and if they take it out of the, you know, the prospectively, you know, that's more than half of my patients are Blue Cross, and I won't be able to take home a salary. So I'm just closing it all up. And I already talked to a lawyer who said it would cost me too much money to fight this. And so I sent out an email to some of my friends around the country and found out that this is not an unusual tactic for Blue Cross. They've been doing this in several other places. And what they do is their whole philosophy is they do it because a lot of times the doctors just pay it and go on without any argument. If they don't pay it, they don't bring them to court but they threaten to drop them from Blue Cross. And if Blue Cross is 50% of your payer mix, that's big time trouble. Anyway, so that's another reason just to get rid of these guys. I mean, they're awful people to deal with. Among the reasons why to uh, do this, I've got a bunch of them listed here, and we've, we've already talked about a bunch of these. The one that surprised me the most was that it is so much fun. And, you know, Catherine alluded to that earlier. And it's one of these things that I'd never, I mean, I was, frankly, I was pissed off. Uh, excuse my French, but I was really mad. And that's one of the reasons why I got out of all this stuff. And I enjoy coming to work every day. I enjoy seeing my patients. It's, it's so much like Marcy was talking about. They're like my family. Um, but the other big reason that I don't have listed here is survival. Uh, I really saw there's only two ways the little guy in private practice is going to go right now. You're either going to do this, go third-party free, or you're going to wind up being an employee for somebody. I mean, that's your two choices. So you better get on board now is what I'd say.